can you uh, shed some light on how an emerging market like india is responding to the adoption of home theaters especially that boasts of dolby's technologies new technologies like atmos and anything else yeah so it's been it's been interesting you know as we look at work in different emerging markets including india uh, you know if we take an example of something like high definition uh, we've seen significant adoption and growth uh, of high definition in these markets be it set top boxes being sold by pay tv operators or hd channels now coming with dolby surround sound uh, you know like for example in india we have over uh, 60 hd channels including regional channels sports channels uh gc channels that are producing content uh, uh, with dolby surround sound discrete surround sound putting them on air so you know we see a lot of adoption of premium experiences coming into homes and people desiring and exper- and demanding those experiences um uh, and uh, yes i mean and you know it's it's this whole cycle of uh, the content getting created I mean, with these experiences uh, and then being made available by service providers be it pay tv operators or ott service providers and the devices then showing up in the home where people can experience that and it could start with a, a large television and then you know a set to hd set top box going into a sound bar or a home theater so the the setups may be different in homes but we are seeing a lot of uh, you know growth uh, and increase in people's experience uh, you know interest in having these experiences and you know linking that back to cinema uh, for example uh, in when we talk about dolby atmos so uh, you know for example so dolby atmos are you know is a, a you know a next generation uh, audio experience and you know we brought that into cinema in about about 4 years ago and uh, it's been very very successful in emerging markets including india where today you know we have over 300 screens with dolby atmos installed uh, 300 movies that have been produced with dolby atmos so and this is not just in only the premium uh, malls but even in smaller cities smaller towns in single screens that they show up uh, and uh, you know consumers across the country have shown a clear preference of you know watching a movie in dolby atmos vis-a-vis one in a cinema which doesn't have dolby atmos and so if you look at titles like this bahubali or some of the bollywood titles so i think now we are close to doing about 100 titles every year so lots of content is showing up a lot of cinema screens are showing up some of the screens are going on to become the highest crossing screens for you know top movies like bahubali and things like and those such movies so so yeah i think there is there is definitely an increase in awareness in adoption of more premium experiences be it in the cinema be it in the living room and also on the mobile so you know audio has become a very important uh, topic for mobile now i think it's an important consideration so people the amount of content being consumed on mobile has gone up quite a bit and you know an audio plays an important part so people make that a decision criteria as to what kind of audio am i going to get from a mobile okay so since you've spoken about the consumer getting so adopted with it uh, can you can you uh, shed some light on what the experience has been for the adoption of low cost uh, home theaters that you get in a box from a uh, manufacturer like sony samsung lg which are easily available uh, to the consumer and uh, dolby's partnership with them to bring this tech to low cost uh, home theaters right so i mean if you look at uh, home theaters or sound bars in in that the audio category in from a home perspective i mean you have a wide range of uh, products available uh, you know starting at you know 5 10000 rupees going right all the way up and pretty much most time there's no upward ceiling in that sense you can you can spend a lot of money in bringing in really high end uh, home theater systems so and and the solutions available at all price points so uh, and uh, you know in terms of uh, you know let's if you talk about the dolby atmos experience you know the atmos experience is a very scalable experience uh, uh, so you know you can, in the cinema you can do it with 100 speakers uh, you know in your living room you can do it with maybe 7 to 10 speakers or even just a sound bar uh, you can even do it with stereo speakers so with upward firing stereo speakers uh, and you know you can do it in the mobile with either stereo speakers on the phone or on headphones but what we also see an interesting development is uh, is atmos showing up in televisions itself so not just requiring a separate sound bar or a home theater but in the television speakers we can now generate an atmos experience uh, and uh, when that, that that is a significant step forward that was not possible with you know channel based sound like 5.1 where you needed a number of speakers to generate that experience but the way atmos as the technology is designed 
uh, and the way it renders out an object, uh, you know, it's possible to do that, uh, you know, with any configuration of speakers that you may uh, may have. The experience again is 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 uh, is uh, different based on you know what type of speakers you use and how they position, but it's possible to have that Atmos experience irrespective of the speaker configuration. And so like LG, for example, so last year LG launched a Dolby Vision across their entire UHD lines. And this year we see them bringing both Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos to the TVs. Uh, some of the TVs have a, a, a kind of a built-in sound bar, uh, but some of them are just uh, regular TV speakers being able to generate an Atmos experience. So I think, so that's becoming quite widely available and it does not necessarily need a you know, full home theater uh, to do it. I mean, for example, Atmos in the home can be done in so many different configurations from, you know, a 7.1.4 to, you know, 5.1 with upward firing speakers uh, or on your sound bar and then stereo speakers or even the TV now. So it's a very scalable experience in that sense. Okay. So now coming to the content that people will consume on these devices at home, Dolby has partnered with uh, uh, Netflix to bring Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, Okja was so widely popularized for that. Um, when can we see the same with other streaming services like uh, Amazon Prime Videos or Hotstar or any other service in India? So, so content has always been you know, a big, big priority for Dolby. Uh, and we've done that very successfully across the globe you know, in, in different markets. So you know, what the work we've done with Hollywood, right starting from 5.1 to what we've done with Atmos and Vision. Uh, you know, and you know, content creators uh, have always been the champions to adopt the latest Adobe technologies. So, you know, Netflix is is another part. You know, is another phase in that story where you know Netflix started off with adopting Dolby Vision uh, as their you know as a HDR format and making you know com committing to doing over 100 hours of content this year in Dolby Vision, and you know a lot of content is now showing up. Uh, Okja was the first movie that they did with Dolby Atmos, and with that they announced the arrival of Dolby Atmos on their service. So now Netflix has, you know, Okja was with both Vision and Atmos, and we expect more content to show up there. Uh, we do work with Amazon also on Dolby Vision, so they have content that uh, on the Amazon service with Dolby Vision. Uh, there are several other services across the globe, uh, like Voodoo, and then other services, you know, in Europe and China, where you know these experiences are available. Uh, the, as far as the, some of the, so in India you have content available with, from services like Netflix already uh, with the Atmos and Vision experience. Uh, you can get UHD Blu-rays. Uh, there are over 40 Indian Blu-ray titles available with the Atmos experience. Uh, so there is a set of amount of content already available. And uh, we are very actively working with a number of OTT partners in India to you know, bring in the Dolby experiences uh, in a phased manner over a period of time. So, uh, I don't have specific announcements at this stage, but you can look forward to, you know, Dolby Audio, Dolby Atmos, and, you know, in future Dolby Vision experiences also coming to, you know, local services uh, and local content. So that's an area of the high priority area, and we, we are working with these partners on, you know, in making that happen, both solving the technical challenges and making the content production, you know, uh, set up for doing these experiences. Okay. Um, so when you watch uh, Tata Sky or Airtel or Videocon, uh, the HD channels on the service providers, you see a little Dolby watermark that comes in, right. Dolby Audio. Right. Uh, is there any way to know which, is it uh, Dolby, uh, uh, Dolby DTS or 5.1 or 7.1 audio that the service providers are giving? Uh, is there any way to know that? Yeah, so we are working with uh, send two parts to that story. So one is the the channel which is you know is has the content producing the content and broadcasting the content so we have uh, over 60 channels i think to precise number is 62 channels now in india hd channels which are producing and broadcasting dolby audio and when we talk about dolby audio we are primarily talking about dolby 5.1 mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's using our codec called dolby digital plus uh, so that's one part where the content is being produced and broadcasted uh, by the channels and that exists in, in, in national GC channels uh, and then sports channels and even regional channels. We have a number of regional channels, language channels that, that are now broadcasting Dolby 5.1 or Dolby Audio with their HD channels. The second part of that, that piece is the service provider, the DTH operator. And in India, uh, we work very closely with Tata Sky and uh, Airtel. Uh, so their services and their set of HD set-top boxes 
provide support for Dolby Audio. Uh, and uh, so if you have a service from Data Sky and Airtel, you can actually connect it up to a home theater or a sound bar or any you know, in 2.0 speaker to really get a much, uh, much, much enhanced uh, audio experience. So, so the specific answer is it, it's, it's when you're talking about Dolby Audio and you, what you see the, the watermark or the brand that's available on several channels now. So it's, it's, a promi it's, it's the indication that that content is being produced and broadcasted with Dolby Digital Plus in 5.1 audio. Uh, and then if you have a suitable service or a suitable set-top box, you will be able to receive that and you know, enjoy that in your living room. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of TVs, HDR TVs that have launched that uh, specify HDR10 only. And a lot of them do confirm that they will get Dolby Vision uh, through a software or a firmware update. Is this applicable for all uh, HDR TVs out there or do you have to have a specific tie-up or, or some communication with the manufacturer to enable Dolby Vision? So we are working with a number of manufacturers globally. Uh, so we're working with the top uh, uh, you know, almost the top nine manufacturers globally now to bring Dolby Vision to their televisions. Um, uh, our lead partner has been LG. So LG has made Dolby Vision available across, you know, starting last year, across the entire UHD line, uh, OLED line. So, and they've continued this year. As I said, they've also added Dolby Atmos. Uh, uh, so, in terms of, uh, you know, specifically, if you, if a consumer is checking for Dolby Vision support, uh, they have to make sure that they check for that either through the company's website or the representative to make sure that uh, the firmware upgrade is going to be available. So uh, it, it's not by default that every HDR10 TV gets an upgrade for Dolby Vision. Uh, there is a specific implementation that needs to be done, uh, you know, in terms of the, the features that Dolby Vision allows with dynamic metadata, uh, you know, the scene-by-scene -scene metadata that work we do. So, and, uh, so it's not automatic. Mm -hmm. One has to check and make sure that uh, the, the TV either either comes preloaded with Dolby Vision support or will have a firmware upgrade available. So it needs to be checked, I would say. Okay, so uh, Netflix claims that you need 24 Mbps to have a good uh, 4K experience. Uh, has that changed with uh, their implementation of Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos? Can you elaborate on the internet connectivity one needs at home to enjoy Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos through Netflix right. seamlessly? So actually both uh, Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos are, are very bandwidth efficient. So yes, when you kind of go from HD to 4K, you obviously need a significant jump in your bandwidth. But what, we, we, what, what happens with Dolby Vision is typically you're talking about 10% additional bandwidth to be used. So whether you're watching HD or 4K at whatever resolution bandwidth you're watching, Dolby Vision typically requires about 10% more bandwidth to be able to provide that entire Dolby Vision HDR experience. Uh, in terms of audio, uh, the audio bandwidth generally is much smaller and uh, with, with something like uh, Dolby Digital Plus 5.1, it's typically streamed at 192 kbps and with something like Atmos, it's uh, currently being streamed at 384 kbps. But uh, going forward, uh, you, we are working on new technologies that will bring down the bandwidth requirement quite significantly going forward. Uh, okay. So there are new codecs that we are working on that we've already you know, launched and announced and are standardizing currently. Mm -hmm. So once that happens, you will be, will be able to do Dolby Atmos delivery at significantly reduced bandwidths. Oh, okay. Um, now, uh, coming to physical medium adoption, uh, which of course a lot of people would go out and buy a CD to keep it for long term or they would want to subscribe to a channel, uh, a service provider. Right. Um, how have you seen the adoption of newer Dolby technologies like, H, uh, like Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos in physical mediums like Blu-rays and all that are being purchased. Right, yeah. So, so Blu-ray, you know, we've, we've seen the, the new UHD standards for Blu-ray come out and actually Hollywood is seeing as a, as a resurgent in uh, physical media. So UHD Blu-ray is actually doing quite well. Um, and, uh, you know, Dolby Technologies, you know, starting with Atmos and now Vision uh, have, you know, have been adopted in these, uh, in these physical media. So talking about uh, Blu-ray, uh, Dolby Atmos shows up in many Blu-rays now just for India specifically. We have 40 titles available with Dolby Vision uh, Blu-ray content, Indian movies. Globally, we have more than 100 titles available. Uh, and uh, as far as UHD is concerned, UHD uh, you know, titles available with Dolby Vision also. So physical media, yes, is, is an important play. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major distribution for uh, premium content. And, uh, but yes, online streaming is catching up uh, uh, globally. There's a big move towards 
uh, you know, streaming happening. And I think people, companies like Netflix and Amazon are really defining that space by bringing, you know, premium, exper premium cinematic experiences into the homes, into the living room, even onto smartphones now or tablets. So I think it's, it's an interesting space to watch. Uh, but, you know, I think the, the way, what, where the industry is moving is, is moving to uh, more immersive and more spectacular experiences. And, and Dolby has a big role to play. We've, we've always played a very important role from an audio perspective uh, of providing the best possible audio experience. And we did that with you know 5.1 and then with Atmos. And now we're doing that with video also. So video is, is an area that Dolby's invested in terms of research for over 10 years. And, I, and with, with Dolby Vision to market, I think uh, there's a great, great response from both content and devices to adopt Dolby Vision in these services. So you know, our aim is that irrespective of uh, where you are consuming media, be it in the cinema, be it in the living room, or be it on the go, uh, on your mobile and irrespective of you know what the distribution media is is it online is it ott is it uh, physical media you should be able to have that spectacular dolby experience uh, so we, we look at all all formats and all distribution mm -hmm. uh, to make that available so dolby atmos as a tech now is five years old so what what's next for dolby when it comes to audio tech what's the next new innovation well, so actually, Dolby Atmos is is a platform. It's a, it's a, uh, it's been it's been rolled out uh, in in specific implementations. We brought it to cinema first, uh, and uh, I mean, I would say Dolby Atmos. There's there's a lot of work to be done in Dolby Atmos, and our focus with Dolby Atmos now is to make the Dolby Atmos experience available across uh, a multiple form factors. Uh, so it's not just in the cinema with a hundred speakers. It's it's in your home as we said with 7.1.4 it's on your mobile with stereo speakers uh, on sound bars on television sets itself so so the idea is to make that atmos experience available on all form factors and not be limited by requiring a certain form factor or certain number of speakers to make the atmos available so atmos you know if you know atmos is really that is the is a big shift in the industry mm -hmm. to move from channel based sound uh, to object-based sound, uh, and uh, you know when you look when you look at the object-based experience uh, with Atmos, uh, not do, not only do you have very precise movement and uh, positioning of sound, you also have the height experience, so it's extremely immersive. So I would not say that Atmos is an old five-year-old experience. And what's next? I think we're just getting started with Atmos. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, they, you, we've, we've, we've launched and brought about certain experiences with Atmos and I think there's a lot more to do and it, in different form factors and different price points. So it should be available in, in a much wider uh, you know, price point range so, and more number of devices. So you, know, you should be able to get that Atmos experience you know, wherever you are consuming media, you know, be it with television, speakers or a full home theater or watching it in a movie. Okay. Now, speaking of Dolby Atmos on uh, the phone, the uh, it is said that to have a good experience, you should have it with the headphones. And a lot of people ask us about whether it should be noise cancellation headphones. Do you need to buy a certain quality or grade of headphones? So the headphones need to be Dolby Atmos enabled. Right. So can you answer this based on someone who's experiencing Dolby Atmos on a phone that is boasting of the technology? I mean, it's a broad question, so there are a lot of specifics in that. but. Uh, in general, I would say, you know, the Dolby Atmos experience and over headphones, uh, yes, it's a very, it's a very compelling, immersive experience. Uh, yes, a better quality headphone will give you a better audio experience. Uh, it's not necessarily that the Atmos experience will be suboptimal in a, in a, in a, you know, on a cheaper headphone. Let's say so you would get that audio experience, but uh, the the audio experience obviously has is determined by the kind of headphone you are using. So uh, 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 a higher quality headphone will give you a better audio experience overall. So it's, it's not that Atmos experience cannot be, uh, has only requires a expensive headphone. Mm -hmm. I mean, the at, you should be able to get an Atmos experience with the bundled headphones also that comes with any phone. Uh, now, uh, now, as far as uh, the uh, noise cancellation is concerned, uh, in general, it should help. Uh, now again, it, it may differ by specific implementations 
and consumers should actually try it out before buying the headphone. In general, it should help, but uh, you know, I'm not I'm not aware of any specific implementation where noise cancellation interferes with the Atmos experience. So, I mean, noise cancellation is used is useful if you are outdoors or in a plane. You know, that's mm -hmm. where those environments it obviously can, you know takes out all the noise mm -hmm. from the background. So it should actually usually help that the Atmos experience, but it's not directly uh, dependent on that. That you know, without that, you're not going to get an ex Atmos experience, or you just need a very expensive headphone to get it. It's, it's not really directly dependent on that. And as far as headphones versus speakers on on the mobile is concerned, um, I mean, we have several phones that you know that we've seen in the market where uh, uh, the manufacturers have implemented the Dolby Atmos experience on the phone speakers itself, but it would require stereo speakers. So front-facing stereo speakers are required to be able to implement that uh, experience. Uh, so yes, yeah, so one should check on the particular phone that they're buying if the Dolby Atmos experience has been implemented uh, on the mobile uh, speakers itself or not. Uh, usually if it's a mono speaker uh, and not front-facing, then it's a little more difficult to uh, get that Atmos experience. You it's not going to be very optimal, so then the headphones are the best way to get it. But there are several models where uh, the Atmos experience is available on the, on the phone speakers also.